Dacha Hao, Wosha Michael Larson, Wosha Nima Depungyu. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Mike Larson from BBC IML. And once again, this is a moment with Mike. And still dealing with uh, allergies a little bit, but uh, that's typical of this time of year for me. So I want to talk a little bit about what everybody has had to go through the last uh, couple of months at least. And you know, it's in the forefront of everybody's mind. It's the COVID-19, the pandemic. If, if it hasn't changed your life, I think maybe you're very unique or, or just maybe haven't been paying attention or, or it's, it's just something that you stay home anyways. But, you know, success has always come pretty easy for me. I wouldn't say easy, but it's, it's always come for me in business. I am, I am good in sales. I am. And I don't mean to sound uh, like I'm trying to be arrogant or anything like that. I've just, that's something I've gotten very good at. So putting myself in front of people and selling myself or selling a product, and really that is about selling yourself, has been something I've always been able to do. Because of that, I've always had people in front of me. So business has always gone well for me because I, ha I had the ability when people were in front of me to portray what I, the service I could give them and show them that I cared enough to help them. And there's a very common statement that is people don't want to know how much, don't care how much you know, they only want to know how much you care. So that is a very important statement. And the only thing you have in life is to set yourself, be able to set yourself apart from everybody else. And the only, and you're unique. So, so that's what you should focus on is yourself and being able to set yourself apart. People don't really, aren't really concerned about the product you're offering. In fact, if all you're trying to sell is the product, you're probably not going to be that successful. What they're after is the story you have to tell and the product is just something that helps that, that once you've connected with them with the story, they are willing to, to go with the product. So I always want, knew that I, I needed to get into online. I needed to create my online business. But it was something that, that I kind of always stayed away from because it, it, it was something I didn't think I would, maybe it wasn't, it was because I didn't think I would enjoy it. And because I was very good at one-on-one -on -one and getting in front of people and selling myself, I didn't have to. I, I could make money doing that way and I could, I could achieve the things I wanted to achieve doing it that way. So last year, I went, I went to China and because I saw an incredible opportunity there. And, you know, thinking back to, the, to what I went through in the last year, I never want to take away from an experience because everything has meaning in life. Everything we do means something to us. And, and I'm not afraid to take a chance sometimes to, <laughs> to uh, my own uh, uh, downfall. But, but in this case, um, being a part of, of that, you can hear my dog, he's got to have his uh, say in this, but... I wasn't afraid of taking that chance. 1.4 billion people over there. I, I, part of me just wanted to find out what it was about China that was different. And I was curious about China and how 1.4 billion people could be below us in the overall realm of things. And I, th I thought that that was a great opportunity. So I wasn't afraid to go over there. And I believed that I could offer something to them. And what I really, what I wanted to do is I wanted to break the gap between, be part of breaking the gap between America and China. You know, bringing the world together. I think we can all, as, as individuals, we can do good things, but as a team, we can do great things. So I saw it as a great challenge. And it was, it was definitely a great challenge. And the first few months were tough. It, it was uh, trying to understand the culture over there and how it was different from America. But yet at the same time, those people were the same. 
And it put me through some trials and really tested my resolve dramatically. And there was many times when I, when I thought I should just quit and come back to America. But I hate quitting in anything. I never like to lose. And, and it keeps pushing me to, to succeed. But this went along for quite some time. And at first there was a lot of failure, there was a lot of challenge, and I learned a lot. But what I did is I finally went back. I realized that people are people. And I finally went back to what I did best, and that's getting in front of people and selling myself. And I'm very good at it, like I said. And it was starting to work. It was starting to happen. And then the COVID-19 happened. And in China, everything got shut down just about the time I was about to put together likely as much as several million RMB, um, that's Chinese money, um, several million in Chinese money together in deals. And because they shut everything down, I couldn't do the one-on-one, -on -one, the consulting that I'm used to doing. And it put me in a, in a tough situation, a scary situation. It really was. And I don't scare easy. But what I realized was I had to go online. I had to learn to go online to bring my business there. The thing that I knew I always had to do, but never had the right push to do it. I do this because I want to make money. And I want to help people. Well, that's, that's a generalization. Everybody says that. But what it really is about is I don't want somebody else running my life. I want to run my own life. When I fail, I want to know that it's because I, I failed and I tried everything. And when I succeed, I want to, make, I want to know that, hey, this, I was right in this. And I'm not afraid to try new things to get to that point. But I was stuck here. This, this was my wall. I was stuck here. I, I was good at what I did, and as long as it was in front of me, I had no reason to change, but now it wasn't anymore, and now I had the opportunity to change, and that's, what I, that's how I had to see it. I had to see it as a challenge. Yeah, it was scary. It was gut-wrenching, and I wasn't sure how to start, and I, can't, I couldn't see the path because I'd never been there before. I couldn't see the path from where it was, uh, where I needed to go, to where I was. I know where I wanted to go, but I couldn't see the path. And usually when, when we, don't, we can't see the whole path, we're going to shy away from it. But the situation forced me to find a way. And what, I, what I'd start to do is I'd find that first step, and I'd start to take that first step. And I told myself, if I could just take that, maybe, maybe that overall distance after that would be much easier. And the next day I found the next step and I took the next step and I took the next step. And yeah, a couple of times I had to go back a step or two to go forward later. What I learned from it though, over and over and over and over again, was that there was a reason this was put in front of me like that. I believe, well, universal law, God's law, is everything you do in life Every success you have in life is always surrounded by a bunch of challenges. And the bigger the challenges are, the bigger that success is going to be on the other side of that. It's easy for us to get into a comfort zone and, and, and say, well, I, I, I don't want to take the risk of that challenge. And I did that for, for too long. I didn't want to take the risk of that challenge. I had to this time. Life forced me to do it. And I also know that when I'm not on the right track, life keeps giving me the same challenge over and over and over again, and that's what it did. It kept giving me that same challenge over and over and over again. Well, this time the challenge was something I couldn't run away from. I had to take that challenge. So that's what I've been doing the last few months is learning about on online and learning a totally different way of sales. I always believed sales was sales, and it isn't. You know, there's three different parts of business. You're, first of all, let me, let me step back a second. The greatest asset we have in, in business 
is people. The five greatest assets are people, 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 and people, and people. But right alongside that asset of people is you have to be able to attract people to you, both in, hello, Sue, <laughs> hello, Susan, hello, Angel. Uh, so you have to be able to attract people to you to, to gain that asset. And there's, there's, you have to have a brand, first of all. Advertising. The only reason you do advertising is to create a brand. If you try to sell products with advertising, you've got a, you've got a tough road ahead of you. Marketing is being able to attract people to you with your brand so you have the opportunity to, opportunity to sell them. And that is a totally different style of selling than one-on-one -on -one selling that I was used to. And I had to learn this. I, I, I had to learn this the hard way several times. When I can do those other two things successfully, then I can bring people to me to do what I'm best at. But I had to change my whole thinking. And I didn't want to do that for a very long time. I don't want to admit I was afraid of something because I hate admitting that, but I was. That, that's something I, that scared me. It's something I didn't want to have to learn something new. I was good at what I did and I could make it work. And it, and it was taken from me in, in these last few months. So this was a great gift from God, in my opinion. A great gift from God. And we have that around us all the time. Universal law, God's law tells us that when we get an idea, and an idea does not come from us, so it comes from a higher power. So let, let, me, uh, let me explain what that means. Everything in life, everything in the universe is made up of energy, and we're all connected with this energy. Everything is interconnected. So ideas don't actually come from us. Ideas come from the universe. When we get in congruence with energy of this idea, it comes to us. And the idea will not come to us unless everything else is already there for, for us to, uh, to get to that idea we want. Everything, when, when an idea comes from us, to us, we have to be able to make it happen. If we don't make it happen, it's only because of us, because we don't take advantage of the things around us. Our, our old brain, there's three levels of our brain, the old brain, the middle brain, and the new brain. The old brain has two functions. The two functions are acquisition of knowledge and survival. That's the only two functions that brain has. Survival is the strongest, though. And survival, anything that's, that, that makes us think of fear and worry is going to put us into survival mode. And everything that we could possibly need all the way around us for any idea we have is already there because God wants us to achieve. Universal law wants us to achieve. So it always gives us everything we need. But survival mode gets in the way sometimes because it's new and unique and we're, we're in our comfortable world where we everything is happening great. When there's no challenge, there's no reason to learn anymore because we're, things are going the way they should be. It's not until that big challenge comes along, God's gift of that challenge to us, that we realize that we have to do something else, and then we're more willing to take a chance if that challenge is big enough. And then we take advantage of the things that are around us. But we have to be in acquisition mode when we do that. The difference between acquisition mode and survival mode is acquisition mode is a positive attitude. We have to have a positive attitude. We have to have faith. Imagine that, faith. Survival mode is just that, a survival mode. It's a leverage. Now, survival mode has two phases. Survival mode is either fight or flight mode. And we can achieve things in, flight, in fight mode. But we always go to flight mode eventually because we want to avoid that, that situation, that pain, that survival mode, trying to keep us from, from the danger, death, 
and anything that scares us or gives, brings fear to us, it likens to death. So that's why we naturally run away from things that we need to create that idea we have. And, it's, and, and this COVID-19 th deal, this epidemic, yeah, it's bad. It's, it's terrible. But it's our opportunity to learn from it and to try something we, we knew we had to try and didn't have a big enough reason to do it. And that's what I've learned from this, is that that was always out there for me. It was always out there to, to reach my, my idea, to achieve my idea, but I shied away from it. I never had a big enough why to do it. And this has given me that why to do it. To understand this universal law, I do a lot of teaching on this. It's a huge thing and it's hard to understand. I know it is, but if you can imagine that everything in life is interconnected and we have dominion over everything, we just have to have faith in ourselves and the antithesis of faith is fear and worry. Think about your life. Think about things that have happened in your life, terrible things that came up that just scared the bejeebus out of you. The, that that fear kept you from 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 ever achieving anything at that point. When you focus on what was wrong, it keeps coming to you because because of of dominion over everything. It isn't until we look for a solution and we have a positive drive into that solution that we start to attract the things that we need to overcome it. Have you ever had anything in your life that that was terrible, eventually you overcame it. And, and the second you started to overcome it is when you started focusing on solution rather than the problem. As long as you focused on the problem, that kept coming to you. As soon as you focused on the solution, it went away. Think about it, it always does. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Uh, Look for us on uh, Facebook, Inspired Motivated Leadership on Facebook. I've got lots of programs that, that, that teach just this. If you have a, a question, just reach out to me and answer. If, there, if there's a subject you'd like for me to, to go over, to, to, to uh, uh, put as the subject for these live, send me an email, mike at Inspired Motivated Leadership, or look me up in Messenger. Uh, friend me on Facebook. If, if you're not already one of my friends. But I thank you for your time. I hope this finds you well. Have a super fantastic evening. And we will see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock with another subject. Have a good one.